Hi everyone, I'm Natalie and welcome to today's session of Nature Notes. Now I'm curious, has anyone ever been told that they can weasel their way out of anything? Yeah. <laughs> when you hear that, you're probably like, oh man, it's not a compliment, I shouldn't be proud of that. But for the next five minutes or so, we're going to talk about why being called a weasel may not necessarily be the bad thing. So one of the animals that caused that phrase to come about is actually none other than the short-tailed weasel, and that will be the weasel that we are focusing on today. So here in Wisconsin, we commonly have three species of weasel, the short-tailed, the long-tailed, and the least weasel. And the least weasel is a lot smaller than the short-tailed and long-tailed weasels, and so it's not commonly confused with the other two. But the long-tailed and the short-tailed weasels can get pretty, pretty confusing, so if you take a look, both have that black tip on their tail, both tend to be this brownish color, and so the easiest way to tell them apart is actually by their tail length, hence their names. So a long-tailed weasel is going to have a tail that is about half the length of its body, so it takes up a pretty large portion of the weasel, whereas a short-tailed weasel is going to have a tail length that is only about the third of its body. And the thing that gets the most tricky is that weasels are fast, they're going to run away when they see you, and so sometimes you can't get a solid look at them, but at least knowing what characteristics you're looking for is one way to help you better identify them. As some of you may have looked at that picture and thought to yourself, I thought that was an ermine. Why are you saying it's a weasel? Like, it's not the same thing. And similarly to how a mountain lion is a puma, is a cougar, an ermine is a short-tailed weasel. And so that name actually comes from the fact that their coats turn white in winter. Very similar to a snowshoe hair. If you think about it, snowshoe hares are brown in the spring and summer, and then in winter they are white, and they're doing that to better blend in with their environment to avoid getting eaten, whereas ermine are doing the same exact thing, except they're trying to better sneak up on their prey. So it's an interesting comparison between predator and prey relationships. Now ermine are part of the Mustelidae family. Mustelids are the largest group of carnivores, there's about 56 species. And they also include things like badgers, otters, mink, marten, and wolverines. Mustelids have very long bodies and usually pretty short noses. And so all weasels are also a part of that. Now the biggest, or they also have, they live in all sorts of habitats. They can be in tundra, they can be in plains, they can be in forests. And so it makes them incredibly versatile. And mustelids are found on every continent except for Australia and Antarctica. So very widespread. When it comes to prey, weasels tend to focus on mice and voles. Those are their favorite foods they like to eat, but they have been known to eat small mammals that are even larger than themselves. They will take down rabbits occasionally. They also will go after birds, amphibians, reptiles, and invertebrates. So a lot of different species they like to eat. I think their hunting style is pretty cool. So what they do is they will get a scope, they'll look around, and they'll go on their hind legs to kind of try and check everything out. Again, it's very similar to meerkats and prairie dogs, except the meerkats and prairie dogs are looking out for predators, whereas the weasel is trying to find its prey. Once it finds something it likes, it'll run in a little zigzag pattern, and it'll hide behind things like shrubs and rocks. It'll use those as cover, just like a rabbit runs in a zigzag pattern to distract. And then once they find what they want, they get close enough to it, and they attack it and give it a nice swift bite to the back of the neck, and they kill it in one bite. So incredibly effective hunters for their size, very efficient at what they do. Now weasels are very interesting because their breeding is a little different than most mammals about their size. Breeding starts in midsummer, except they have what is called delayed implantation. So after they breed, they'll actually have a gestation period that will last eight to nine months. We have a gestation period of nine months. So weasels are having babies in them for almost as long as we do, which I think is pretty insane. So once breeding happens, the actual birth of the babies will not occur until about April. A mother will give birth to four to nine pups, and their eyes and ears will be closed for the first about five, six weeks of their lives. Once they are awake, they will stay with their mom until about the end of summer, and then they'll disperse. Males will go farther away. They're going to want to make new territories, have their own space. They can find a female. Females are going to stay closer to home. They won't go quite as far away. Other interesting fact is that females can start breeding about 60 to 70 days after they're born. Males have to wait two years. So a pretty big difference between that, and it's also interesting considering that the average lifespan of a weasel is only about four to six years in the wild. So males don't have a whole lot of time to breed. But as far as their home life goes, weasels like to hang out in dens. They'll usually use rock shelters or abandoned 
dens from other animals, and they'll even cache food in their dens while they're in there. The biggest misconception when you think about weasels is a lot of farmers don't like them. A lot of them think that the weasels are out to kill their poultry, they're going to go after their chickens, they're just going to cause problems. But weasels actually don't really go after poultry that often. They're a lot more likely to go after all of the mice and the voles on the property. And so, in farms, they actually benefit them more than do damage to them. So because of all those reasons, next time you're called a weasel, take it as a compliment. Being crafty isn't always a bad thing. Thank you.